Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore, and my company is called Eros Coaching. That's E-R-O-S, coaching.com. And in today's show, I will be summarizing the last 12 episodes of Eros Evolution. This is what I do periodically for people who are too busy to listen to an entire show, and they just want the gems of each show. And so this is something that I came up with because I thought, well, you know, if I'm not a very auditory person, in order for me to listen to something, I really want to make sure that it's worth my time. And how can I uh, offer this option to people who are like me, who just want a little taster and a teaser of what they can expect if they actually tune into the full show. Uh, so this is how the idea first came about. And I thought that I could uh, summarize a couple of them and uh, because I have three breaks and that they are at a 15-minute segment. So I thought, okay, how many shows can I do in one segment? And so this is really how it started. This is the sixth, sixth time that I'm doing it. And so this is a reflect and recap. Who have I had thus far and what have I learned about sexuality and spirituality and what do I suggest for listeners out there? Well, you see, I started this show because I wanted to explore my own relationship with sexuality and spirituality. I've always been interested in uh, sex and I've always also been interested in spirituality. And for a long time, even though I was a sexologist, I really wasn't able to figure out the link between the two. And of course, I had a vague idea from uh, Tantra, and I have had many Tantricas come onto the show explaining it. But what is interesting is being able to talk to other people who are not Tantricas, who are in BDSM, who are therapists, who have different kinds of backgrounds, and uh, ask them what they feel is the link between sexuality and spirituality. And so I've I've learned so much in the last year and a half, and um, I want to now delve into the last uh, 12 guests that I have had. Okay, the first one on June 23rd, uh, episode 76, I had the show God's Call Girl and Healing from Abuse. And the name of the guest I had, and also these are the titles of her two books. Uh, her name is Carla Van Ray, and her book, God's Call Girl, is a memoir that has been sold half a million copies around the world. It's really about a Catholic girl who was born in the Netherlands who became a nun after migrating to Australia. She stayed with this place for 12 years and she left to become a sex worker at the age of 34. The show explored why she did uh, what she did, what she's doing now, and what she did was she was she was, she was having um, sexual abuse when she was young and she totally blocked it out from her mind and it wasn't until when she started exploring her sexuality after she left the monastery that she realized what had gone on. And uh, that led to her third book, which is Healing from Abuse. And um, I was asking her questions about both books, and we were really focusing more so on the second book, which is Healing from Abuse. Uh, in in the in the show, she talked about the major wounds that are created by abuse and how it affects our sexual expression and our relationships. She talks about how she heal herself and how others can learn from her. And uh, obviously, I've read both books uh, because I love reading and I believe that we can have a much better show if I listen to my guests. Uh, share their experiences uh, through their books and not have to rehash the whole book. 
So I read both books and I really love the the soft, beautiful tone that she had uh, in her, her third book, Healing from Abuse. And if you're interested in this show, be sure to tune in to this uh, episode. She says, I'm 77 and I have been on a healing journey since 1992. And now I feel I'm in a position to help others who are a few steps behind me. And indeed, during her time, there were very few people talking about holistic healing and new age therapies and her book, Healing from Abuse, actually summarizes that. So if you're interested in this episode, what you can do is you can do a quick Google search, Arrow's Evolution at a Glance, and you'll be able to find this whole list of all the different shows I've done in one page. That's episode 76. Just do a control F and you'll be able to find that show. In episode 77, I had uh, Elise Carr talking about the divinely empowered woman. Uh, Elise Carr is also a sexologist like myself, sex educator, and she wanted to talk about the connection between the yoni, which are the female sexual organs, and the heart and mind of a woman. And for her, these three parts, when they are in sync, uh, helps us be flowing and nurturing divinely empowered women. She's passionate about the power women have from within and offers needs reawakening to reach its full potential. So she was talking on the show, practical, practical ways to reconnect with your, and reconnect or connect with your yoni heart and mind to begin your personal journey of empowerment. And uh, I'm just going to be looking through my show notes and summarizing the gems that I received from her. What she said was if we are able to connect with our yoni, which is uh, essentially our entire sexual organ, uh, the vaginal canal is a muscle and being a muscle, it has muscle memory. And once we understand this biology and the trauma that can be locked inside, we can go past this discomfort that we have and assess the detachment that we have. From this, we can go on to forgiveness, letting go, so that we have room to be more beautiful and to let in the light that we have. And when we are divinely empowered and truly able to then let in the capacity for love and light to come into our lives. So this was Elise Carr who was talking about this and she talks about how to connect with yourself and a very, very simple question that all of us can give to ourselves is what do I need for me to know right now? What do you need me to know right now? So you can ask your heart and womb, you can connect with your heart and womb and then ask this question, ask your body, what do you need me to know right now? And the show, we talked about the triad relationship between your soul, yourself, and your spirit, and your tribe. So this is the sense of community that we really need in order to have wellness in our heart, in our lives. In the show, she also talks about the connection with our breasts, and they are definitely much more than just play toys. She then talks about the mind, being able to slow it down so that we have better perspective and this is when we can separate the muddiness and uh, when we are able to do that, we become less inclined to hear gossip and magazines and it is an inside out that begins to happen. She also talks about the broken heart and what we can do to heal ourselves instead of seeing it as a problem, see it as a gift being able to heal ourselves better so that the next time round we will be able to better understand. She values the importance of going into the underworld, going to our dark side of the feminine so that we can be able to be lighter. And this is a unique approach and um, all of us need to find our own way to heal our broken heart. And she was sharing some tips in that show. In the show, our, my guest, uh, Elise Carr, also talked about her two books. Um, the first one uh, being uh, Run, Run Away, a model that she was uh, in the past. And then the second book that she's working on, which is on Yoni Power. Okay, and on episode 78, I was talking about blending your palette and enlivening your sex life with Tantra and Kink with Dawn Beck and Gerard Getz. And this is really talking about uh, their workshop. This is the same title as their workshop that they offer. And it talks about incorporating kink and tantra to create a container to safely 
passionately and adventurously explore. In the show, she talked about, uh, they talked about how, uh, what what is kink. They talked about their workshop and how they work. So it gives you a good idea of what you can expect. And then they talked about uh, what uh, being dominant and submissive means to them. To them, it is the age between pain and pleasure. It's about really exploring uh, the role of being give, giver and receiver and being able to play with breath and sound. Talked about breath coming from the jaw and throat and sound being a vibration such as the sound ah. And they talked about BDSM being intensity of touch rather than just thinking of it as pure pain. When you talk about intensity of touch, you want to be thinking about scratching, slapping, spanking, nipple sensation, toys, tickling, and it's a play of senses, and that can include being blindfolded, eliminating senses, so that different parts of your body will then feel, of course, more alive and heightened. The anticipation and the element of surprise also comes into play. So the show really demystifies a lot about uh, what BDSM is about. The show also talks about fantasy and how you can go into pretending not to know each other and that can really help with heightening uh, the newness in long-term relationships especially. So you could go into role-playing, costuming, languaging, and they then also emphasize the importance of safety and consensual sex. So we have a break right now and we're going to come back and talk more about the different shows right after this break. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist. And uh, please check out my website, arrowscoaching.com. I do have some online training programs, which includes overcoming premature ejaculation, vaginismus, and another one on how to jumpstart your sex life. So I have three online products right now, and of course, I'm also available via Skype. So for those of you out there who are overseas, not in Singapore, do know that I'm available via Skype as well. So let's move, it, move on and summarize the other shows that I've had in the last few months. In episode 79, I had How to Have Synchronicity, Manifestation, and Sex Magic in Your Life. 
and this was really a show that I had to win because I had a lot of technical problems patching my guests onto the show and um, it was really frustrating uh, trying to do it and so for the first 15 minutes or so into the show you can hear that I was going mm, uh, and I was kind of like stammering because I was trying to piece together a show that I didn't have and I kind of just winged it. So during this show what I talked about was my personal manifestation stories and in that show I explained how law of attraction has worked in my life. In the show, I talked about how we should all focus on being our highest vibration at any moment as best as we can so that we can have the best results possible in our lives. And in order to change the world, I believe that we need to take responsibility for who we are and what we can do with what we have. And so it was pretty choppy uh, into the show. However, I got my uh, groove back and I was talking about my own personal experiences and and then of course the last 15 minutes I talked about sex magic and I gave examples in the show and I hope uh, this show makes sense to you and of course if you have any questions feel free to drop me an email at any point and you can email me at drmartali at arrowscoaching.com okay moving on to episode 80 which was on June, July 21st, I talked about masculinity and femininity. I uh, talked about, uh, I decided to put on this show because I had a problem with my guest and of course it was difficult finding a last minute guest. So what I did instead was I decided to talk about something that I haven't talked about in past shows which is the difference between masculinity and femininity, what it meant, means for me, my own journey in finding out what that meant. And so in the show summary, I talked about how men and women have equal rights and responsibilities in the workplace and relationship in our modern day society. So in our modern day society, is there a place for masculinity and femininity? Is it even relevant? And if so, how does one apply these concepts and practices in their lives? So in this show, I did talk about how my personal journey of masculinity and femininity, I explained it to the best of my ability and then I talked about how I personally feel is uh, the relevance of masculinity and femininity in our lives. Being a woman, of course, being a feminist, I for a long time felt that femininity was irrelevant, it was weak, it was a sign of uh, stupidity and it was totally irrelevant. What I didn't realize was being able to understand both sides of the spectrum, the masculine and the feminine, is a way of being able to make sense of the world and being able to navigate and also be able to have the vocabulary and languaging that we need so that we can better articulate where we are at. And uh, masculinity and femininity is so much more than just gender, so much more. It has to do with the essence of who you are at every single given point. So say for instance, right now, even though I'm trying to sound pretty loving and sound all smooth, but I am actually taking a masculine role of directing the show. So being able to toggle between the two is a skill and being able to be mindful about it is another skill. So this is very important to understand actually because if we are conscious and aware of what we are doing at any given mo moment, then this is when we can choose to be more skillful. And this is really uh, quite a skill that all of us need to be aware of. And at any given moment, we are usually never 100% of one side of the spectrum. So tune in to episode 80 if you are interested. You will hear me talking for this entire show. And I hope you like it. In episode 81, which was on July 28th, how to improve all your relationships, bracket, and becoming an amazing social human being, close bracket. And I had Samuel Ryder. And in, in this show, we had a lot of sound problems. The, uh, the recording wasn't very good. The sound had problems. 
and we talked about how you can improve all your relationships in your personal life, in your business, and also social life in general. We live in a world where people are afraid to speak their truth, and Samuel challenged us to try not to be trying to impress each other, but instead commit to truly liking ourselves. So Samuel is an expert in coaching people on how to connect and reconnect to the world again, and he sh tried to show me how we, I can find my inner goal, get clarity on my mission, and to speak my truth and become an amazing social human being. Like I mentioned, there were some issues, and um, what happened in the show actually was this moment where he was coaching me and my whole attitude shifted. I was tired, I was grouchy, I was grumpy because I was tired. And he coached me during the show and all of a sudden my energy shifted in the show and I'm not sure if you can hear it. It's really quite beautiful. He was challenging me to ask the question, what would happen if we allow ourselves to be human? What will happen if you allow yourself to be human? This is when we just drop everything. We drop our mask, we drop our ego, and we get real. And when we get real with someone, we get real with yourself, magic happens. And so this is what he was talking about. He introduced the concept of social tantra. This is where you have connectedness, and it makes for amazing sex. He talks about dropping all that, being a step stepping stone, to accepting all our flaws, and this is when we can relax and truly connect with people. In episode 82, I talked about sex as a sacred journey from womb to end of life with Veronica Monique, and she is the founder of Shame Free Zone, and she's passionate about healing all shame, and especially sexual shame. She's a certified sexologist with a mission to educate adults about their sacred sexual birthright. And she talks about the average age in which uh, most human children begin to masturbate and how our relationship with our sexuality changes over time, often in ways that are destructive to our well-being. She gave clear steps in which we can reclaim our sacred sexual birthright, our shameless connection to our sexual natures and the joy and and passion that sexual energy infuses in every aspect of our lives. And because uh, Veronica Monique is a sex educator and sexologist like myself, we were able to get along perfectly and of course whatever she said I understood. However, because she has a lot of experience and thoughts and thinking about shame, she was actually teaching me things that I didn't think of deeply and so it was very very beautiful for me to have her on the show. She asked the question of whether it is possible to have good shame and her answer was no. Shame is different from guilt. While shame is about who we are and uh, talking about how we are horrible people, guilt is actually harm, harming ourselves and others. It's about becoming, hating being that person. She encourages us to shift from the positive and negative side of shame and guilt and treat it as a moral compass instead to navigate what we really need in order for change to start taking place in our lives. And um, she, she, we talked about many things. We talked about our sexuality, our womb, our spirituality, we talked about shame, we talked about religion, and we talked about her attitude about bonobos, which are animals that have a lot of sex, who learn how to be able to have no shame in their sexuality, and actually in their lives they have very little uh, conflict and uh, totally no violence. Uh, they are different from chimpanzees who have violence, and so she was talking about how if we were happier and had more sex, the world be, would be a lot more peaceful. And um, the shame that we have a lot of times is fueled by incest, pain, by the church, by religion, and by violence. 
if only we get along better, we not only have happier sex lives, we can turn our lives around and be able to be living lives longer and healthier. So if you're interested to hear about uh, Veronica Monique's interesting perspective about sex as a sacred journey from womb to end of life, tune in to episode 82. And you can find all my shows by doing a quick Google. That's uh, Arrows Evolution at a Glance. If you do a quick Google, you'll be able to find this page. And uh, this page has all the different episodes at one glance. So you just basically scroll up and down the page. I have a I had decided to do this because I understand how irritating it is to have to click here, click there, click, 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 click to find all the different shows. And so that's why I decided to do put it all at uh, one single page so that you can just scroll up and down instead. We're going to have a break in two minutes, so I'm just going to be uh, rambling on for a little bit. Um, in episode 82, Raising Sexual Energy with Paul Beck. So I was getting him to come onto the show for the second time. So if you're interested to find his other show, be sure to just do a Control F, search his name, and it will pop up when you are on the page, Arrows Evolution at a Glance. So in this show, we were exploring how humans through history have been seeking to cultivate their sexual energy for a higher purpose. And um, the show was talking about what had been done in the past. So we talked a little bit about sexual history. And we talked about what is some of the things that is being done today. So this is cutting-edge things that I'm hearing from Paul Bag. And we also talked about cultivating sexual energy for the purposes of healing. And then we segue into what Paul is up to. Paul is uh, doing something tremendously exciting. He, uh, so we can cut into break right now and um, I'm going to continue after the break. So this is what happens when you try to do too many things before a break. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be back. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times. Co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Carrie Ann Larson. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OhmTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in a beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D E B L I V medium.com. I want to thank my mommy for loving me so much, for, for taking, taking me to the doctor when I broke my foot, for leaving me alone when I wanted to be alone. And, and now, as a grown-up, I'm thankful for being able to take care of you, my dear mom, for taking you to your therapies, for understanding that sometimes you simply want to be alone. Roles change without us noticing. That's why AARP gives you the information to provide even better care for your loved one. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. You are listening to Eros Evolution on the OMTIMES Radio Network, and you can share this show with your friends by going to this link, omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you and your friends will be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. That's really cool and convenient. So just before break, I was talking about uh, my 
episode 83, which is Rising Sexual Energy with Paul Beck, and I was uh, saying that he is uh, starting to tour the country teaching and certifying practitioners in something that he created called Sensual Reiki. It's a new form of Reiki that he developed and it's a modality that begins to tap into our sexual energy to amplify the healing effects of traditional Reiki. So I'm a Reiki master myself. I was very curious, how exactly do you do that? And so what Paul Beck says is that you are essentially um, naked. Um, well, you don't have to be fully naked. It's just the lower half of the body. You're using gentle Reiki energy, and what you're doing is you're uh, putting a finger at the perineum to activate the sexual energy. And uh, there is, uh, I believe, no genital touch. And so during the show, I was um, able to get from him how, uh, what happened in the past with uh, Eros, uh, God of sexual desire. He talked about how people were uh, finding ways to uh, use sexual energy for the purpose of fertility, for fertilizing their props. Uh, growing them, and uh, essentially still using sexual energy to get closer to God. He mentioned Tantra, and he talked about uh, how people uh, did it through pujas, rituals, ceremonies, by appointing priests and priestesses, head of tribes, medicine men, shamans. And in modern day, we have Tantra, sex magic, true pagans, and witchcraft. He talks about focused sexual energy and being able uh, for us to then work on mastering this energy in modern science and technology, it is about um, unexplainable things, and uh, we with spirituality go more within nowadays, and it's really about using that spiritual spirituality and sexuality for ourselves in order to develop ourselves. He talked about sexual energy being the strongest energy in our bodies and being a force for transformation and change. And uh, he believes that this same energy is in Mother Earth and nature and is dominant versus being able to, for us to cultivate so as to be able to be more sexually empowered. He talks about also Kundalini Yoga and um, he talked about what he uses to raise a sexual energy and I'm not going to give you the entire show here of course so if you're interested in this show please listen to episode 83 Raising Sexual Energy with Paul Bag. In episode 84 I had Love After War supporting disabled veterans with uh, Dr. Mitchell Tapper and this was the second time I had Dr. Mitchell Tapper on the show and I actually love this man a lot. I love him because he is cute, smart, funny and of course very knowledgeable and passionate about what he does for a living. So he is a clinical sexologist and uh, he has a physical disability and that has actually led him to his path of wanting to help people who have similar conditions uh, of disability and not able to navigate their sexuality. So it became a calling that found its way into his life through his own uh, tra uh, tragic uh, trauma. And he was talking about in this show how he is, he was, uh, is, uh, probably still is, trying to raise funds for his new documentary, Making Love After War. And uh, this is really about veterans, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Army veterans, uh, meaning they left the Army, so they are, they are veterans. And um, when you have gone through um, the war, what happens is you end up with post-traumatic stress disorder for a lot of them. And uh, they also end up... Um, having intimacy issues because they were having a long distance relationship and this affects the changes in the dynamic in the relationships which leads them often to having uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Not only that, they have combat stress disorder which can uh, be from uh, being burned, from having burn injury and then affects uh, trust, safety, empathy, uh, how you navigate sleeping together again, sex, love. There are symptoms that come up. For instance, other issues that may not be necessary in post-traumatic stress disorder, such as uh, anger issues, uh, 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 discontrol of the anger, um, righteousness that comes out in inappropriate times, being um, sleeplessness, irritability, uh, overwhelm, withdrawal, 
And this anger can, of course, be verbal and physical, which can affect then trust and safety in the relationship. He talks about how in sex and spirit, uh, even for people who have a moral injury or spiritual injury, meaning you have killed someone, how do you reconcile that within yourself? These people may go into dark places where they feel undeserving of love and pleasure and uh, they can have survival guilt uh, if they have survived when their other um, uh, mates have not. How to then go into pleasure and uh, dealing with the question of why me? Why did I leave when they didn't? So even as I go through the show notes now, you might be able to sense from my voice, it was actually a very illuminating show and a uh, a difficult show where I learned so much that I, I kind of just swept under the carpet or maybe just through ignorance not knowing the complexities of the different topics that he has uh, had to work with uh, through working with wounded uh, warriors and their families. And so Love After War is his documentary uh, effort uh, of trying to showcase real-life examples of disabled veterans reclaiming healthy, fulfilling relationships despite their injuries. And he wants to raise awareness for the intimacy issues that they face. So if you're interested in this episode, listen to episode 84. And in episode 85, I had Carl Frankel, and he talks about how to create a positively pleasurable relationship. And of course, he has also had multiple books. And he talks about the mistakes that we have when it comes to what happens when we are upset, we go into reaction, we lash out at our partners, we attack them, we have hostility, we put people down. And it is very important to go into awareness. Conflict and timing is everything when it comes to resolving it. He gives a lot of suggestions uh, in it. And in his book, he talks about uh, five rooms in the house. The first room being uh, the relationship we have with our parents, uh, the bad mom, dad. The second being the courtroom where our inner lawyer, uh, you know, where we want to fight, gets activated. The third one being the cafe where you can actually have conversations and be social and just kind of get along with your partner. In the fourth room, we have the bedroom. This is when you have a tenderness, and it doesn't necessarily mean sex, eye gazing. And in the fifth room, this is when you have bliss, and um, there are things that you can do to meet each other in the meadow. He talks about the five room being necessary and um, in a relationship, and how we all need to be able to navigate through them. And so, of course, if you're interested in this, you can listen to the show, or you can get his book, uh, Carl Frankel's book. And... Um, he has several books, actually, and uh, one of them is actually award-winning because what he did in that book is he went around and interviewed the, the sex experts of the world and the topics that they were best in, and he pulled it all together, and of course, that makes for very good reading. Don't ask me now what is the title of his book. I cannot remember, and I cannot find it in my show notes, and of course, the show has to go on. So if you are interested in this, Please listen to episode 85, How to Create a Positively Pleasurable Relationship with Carl Frankel. And that was on August 24 on Arrow's Evolution. Going to go now to episode 86, How to Worship the Goddess and Keep Your Balls. Indeed, this is a funny title. And this is also the title of his book, How to Worship the Goddess and Keep Your Balls with David Bruce Leonard. And uh, actually, David Bruce Leonard uh, approached me and he said, would you be interested to read my book? And of course, I had to tell him the truth. I am not going to write you a review if I don't like your book. Um, and uh, this is what I do, right, when people ask me to review their books. I have to first be interested to read the book, number one. Number two, I read the book and then I review the book if I like the book. I'm not going to put out more negative messages into the world. And I have read books that I hate, and so I, I've gone back to the author and say, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to review your book because it's not going to help your sales at all by writing something completely negative, and it's going to waste my time, and it's putting out more hate messages into the world. Why would I do that? So when uh, David uh, Bruce Leonard approached me, like many people who have approached me, 
I I am of course interested because I'm a sexologist and I'm interested in learning new things. His uh, title was a bit triggering for me. I thought maybe this is just another smart aleck who was just trying to uh, be in his ego and uh, get get some uh, people interested in his work. Uh, but no, I read the book and I loved, I loved, 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 loved the book. I really loved the book. It is, uh, despite the title, um, it is actually about uh, the rivers of love and it talks about shadow uh, as well and, uh, okay, why do I love the book? I love the book because he talks about the best of Tantra and uh, Tao, T-A-O, uh, which is ancient Chinese uh, philosophy of sex and then of course there's uh, Tantra and there are practices inside and he talks about uh, how to be a good lover as a man in his book. Uh, but anyway, in the show we were not talking so much about his book, we were also talking about his concept of the sacred yes and the sacred no, the connections between sacred sexuality, self-defense and the human nervous system. And uh, in The Rivers of Love, he talks about being able to do circling so that you can come in for the landing, which means uh, touching first and then uh, so that you can touch later. And he talks about spiraling for the takeoff and he talks about the shadow so that you can lean in. He talks about instant, instant, infinity practices in his book, which includes infinite hugging, infinite kiss, and the scissors. So if you are interested in these practices, be sure to listen to the show and or uh, just buy his book because I loved it and I am very sure you're going to get a lot out of it. It's one of those books that I know I will return to and also will use as a resource. In the show, he also talks about relationship as a path, as yoga, and uh, emotional pain and the need to uh, take the right partner. So stay tuned as we go into break and I'll come back to summarize the rest of the show. Have one more next. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with Rain. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. And welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meets, of course. And today I'm summarizing for the sixth the sixth time in episode 88, uh, a recap and reflect on all the 12 episodes that I've had on Arrow's evolution thus far. And um, 
I have uh, just summarized just now, just before the break, episode 86, How to Worship the Goddess and Keep Your Balls with David Bruce Leonard on September 1. And uh, now we are going to September 8, which was actually just last week, where I had episode 87, Getting in Touch with Yourself with John Gosling on Arrow's Evolution. So John Gosling is a, a certified sexuality uh, uh, sorry, a certified sex. Uh, a certi- sorry again, a certified sexological body worker like myself. So he does touch, and I don't do touch in my work. I'm trained, but I don't do touch in my work as a sexologist. And uh, in the show, we talked about how we become disconnected from ourselves in modern society. And this connection usually comes from external sources, such as our parents, other close relationships, and society in general. So John has been on a journey of self-discovery to learn about what he truly wants and will be sharing and was sharing uh, on the show his experience of his own journey to illustrate what is possible to achieve in anyone's life. His journey has included overcoming the dark experiences of addiction, anger, avoidance, bereavement, denial, depression, divorce, disconnection from his body, depression, emotional anorexia, loneliness, low self-esteem, sexual repression and dysfunction, shame and touch isolation. Sorry, I'm pronouncing words wrongly here. It can be a bit of a tongue twister. So I was recording the show when I was in Perth last week and I was freezing and I was freezing (laughs) during the show and um, um, I was also uh, trying to do Facebook Live for the first time during the show and I couldn't figure out how to put down the phone and so I was recording the show and holding on to the phone for the entire show of one hour. Anyway, what do we talk about during the show? We started with John talking about uh, his personal journey of how he became uh, sexually awakened. And he started to go into body work and breath work. And he was uh, introducing the idea of how we often talk about mind, body, and spirit. And he offers this alternative view of maybe we should look at body, spirit, mind instead. So he, in his opinion, the body is a bridge between heaven and earth. Our body is a temple worthy of worship because our body is sacred and worthy of honoring. And once we can tap into our body, then our body is a gateway to spirit and then to mind. So the concept of listening to your body, of the gut feeling, feeling into your heart. Again, this is about listening to your body. And of course, in his work, it is all about the body. And once we can love what we are feeling, we can then tap into going into a better place. He talks about energy play. And to him, what it means is connecting to our sexual energy. Our sexual energy is, for him, creation, creation energy, life force energy, and connection with ourselves. When we can do that through connecting with our genitals, which is uh, connected to our sacral energy, connected to our heart, and then we can move this energy from our genitals, our sacral energy, our heart, and up to higher realms and this is um, can be a meditative practice and of course uh, integrating of all those energies he talks about orgasmic yoga and of course he talks about how much he loves my book and don't you love people who come on your show and talk about how they love your book (laughs) so he talks about orgasmic yoga and talks about my book and he talks about how he feels orgasmic yoga is a great way of having practice making, not perfect, practice making permanent. This is where neuroscientists believe that if we can just rewire our habits, then of course we rewire our bodies and we rewire our lives. Okay, so what is orgasmic yoga? Probably for people who haven't heard about this. Orgasmic yoga is a practice where you masturbate every day for 30 minutes for 30 days. It is not about ejaculation or orgasm necessarily. It's about orgasmic energy in our body. 
it's less about the goal and about the release, it's less about going quickly and more about breaking habits instead of quick, going slow instead of focusing on the release, focusing on pleasure, focusing on loving yourself, loving your body and uh, this is also his masturbation philosophy. Love yourself, love your body. It is not about being stuck in rut and it is definitely about being and coming back to your heart. In the show, uh, John Gosling talks about his opinion about porn and his opinion about cuddles and sex and touch and um, lots of other good, yummy stuff. So if you are interested in John Gosling's work and what we talked about specifically in the show, do tune in to last week's episode, episode 87, Getting in Touch with Yourself with John Gosling. So I have a couple more minutes before the show ends and I have just, ah, in the last 50 minutes or so, summarized the last 12 episodes of Arrow's Evolution. Arrow's Evolution is where sex and spirit meets. This is not just a woo-woo. This is very much a personal exploration for myself as well. And uh, I have something to share with you about my... Uh, relationship with John Gosling and we did talk about it a little bit at the end of uh, the show last week and I want to mention it once again uh, because uh, we were running out of time and so we just kind of skimmed through it. So John and I uh, um, kind of fell in like with each other um, because of pure real respect for each other. So what was happening is he was doing his sexological bodywork training, he was googling orgasmic yoga, found me and uh, me talking about orgasmic yoga and my practices, started following my work, reached out to me, we became friends and uh, we've been uh, in contact uh, for the last year really and we've decided to come together and launch a YouTube channel together and our YouTube channel is going to be called The Intercourse Show. This is not just uh, sexual intercourse we're talking about, of course we're talking about mental and social intercourse and the show will be exploring everything that has to do with love sex and everything in between. So it's going to be a YouTube channel, we're going to meet each other, me in Singapore and him in UK, Manchester. We're going to do this on Zoom. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be answering frequently asked questions by listeners and readers. So if you're interested to be the first to get your sex question or love question or relationship question or any question answered, then uh, you can just drop me an email. And my email is drmasterly at arrowscoaching.com. So uh, John and I are getting together actually this Sunday and we're going to start recording before we post the episodes up on YouTube. And uh, if you're interested in all these uh, developments, then of course, Stay tuned to my work by subscribing to my newsletter that's arrowscoaching.com that you can find. And I, of course, also have Arrows Coaching Facebook page and you can follow me on DR Matali, my personal Facebook page. I do not, I'm sorry, listeners out there, I do not uh, add friends for people that I haven't met personally or who are not in a similar field of work, like a fellow professional who is a sex educator or a relationship expert. I only friend these people because that's my way of, of protecting my privacy. But anyway, uh, this is where I'll be posting my Facebook Live uh, videos. And um, if you're interested in keeping in touch with all the developments, that are developing actually very quickly, um, then uh, subscribe to my mailing list and also follow me on Facebook, my personal page or also my Arrows coaching page. I also have an Arrows Evolution page which not a lot of people are following. So if you're only interested in Arrows Evolution, the radio show, then what you do is you follow that radio show and I'll be posting there, oh, okay, this episode has come on, this is my guest this week. So those uh, posts will be specific to only Arrow's Evolution. So that can cut out quite a bit of too many things going on in your Facebook 
and you're not sure what is making sense anymore, this is when you can uh, go on to follow me on Arrow's evolution. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, find, okay, so next week I have a different guest and uh, next week I'll be um, having uh, Joseph Holmes and he's the survivor of adolescent sexual, emotional and physical abuse and he's going to be talking about his awareness of angels around him, his life with Mother Mary and Mother Ma uh, Mary Magdalene, sorry, and uh, it's, uh, he's going to be talking about his book and he's going to be talking about how he survived all that. And I see this as a link between sex, of course, but with spirituality. So this is somebody who is not a sex educator. I often get lots of sex educators on the show because I'm a sex educator myself and I have lots of connections to fellow sex educators and of course we want to hear from people who know what they're talking about, we want to learn from the experts, so this is why I get fellow experts on the show, but on this episode I'll be getting somebody who's a survivor and who has had his spiritual awakening and so if you're interested in this, be sure to tune in to the next week's episode of Arrow's Evolution. So this has been Dr. Martha Tara Lee of Arrow's Coaching check out my app, my website and uh, know that you can reach out to me by email and of course hire me and uh, we can do Skype coaching. So stay tuned and um, have a good week ahead. Goodbye.